Action. Action. Yeah, we're both bearded monkeys, eh? I've had a beard since I was fucking 21 or something like that, and I've never shaved it off since. Really? Yeah. When was the first time you noticed you had hair on the face? Four years old? Well, uh, no, I, I, but I used to have, like, I used to do, like, retarded stuff with it. Do you know, like, when I was, uh, when I was 16, 17, I used to have, you know, like, fucking chin straps yeah. coming over, like, it's awful, <laughs> awful, like, there's pictures of me with that. Even in college, I used to have that. Then you do like a little fucking square goatee looks awful as well. But at the time, you just look in the mirror and you're like, I'm yeah, a man, I'm a man. man. I'm a man. Yeah. This is me. And um, Did you ever dye it like uh, orange, white, and fucking green? Um, oh, one second. I should, This is it looks stupid to mm-hmm. answer the phone on the podcast, but I'm just, just going to do it. Well, yeah. what's the crack? I, I just, I, I'm recording here now, but... Uh, so I'm on the podcast, but it's fine. Can you hear me? Well, maybe he called me by accident. I don't know. I've been trying to do sign language there. All right. Because if he wanted to come to the show tonight. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah. But, the be- but yeah, I used to do all those fucking dumb beard shit. Tried a little bit of mustache. It wasn't coming through. And then eventually one, because he couldn't grow a full beard. Mm-hmm. So you had to do the fucking yeah, dumb get, get shit. Over there. Yeah. So even when, even the, when people do it now, like adults, like 30 year olds with a goatee, it's like, cause they try the beard and they can't yeah. do it. <laughs> they just failed miserably. Yeah. And yeah, they're yeah. just trying to look like a man. But uh, once you get a full beard, then it's like, you just don't do anything and it just looks cool. Some people look terrible, I guess. Uh, Some people. Yeah, but I mean, it looks terrible until it's what it's supposed to be. You gotta, you gotta let it grow out. Like you, even people with long hair, it looks ridiculous while they're trying to grow That's it true. out. So then it takes like three years. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like a commitment. But usually those people are kind of cool because they they've committed to something mm, and they yes. followed through. Right. So they're good at other things as well, like surfing and shit. That's why like people with long hair are good at surfing, playing the guitar. All that shit, because they, if they can commit to growing a long hair or a long beard, then they can commit to other shit in life, wow. and they've learned those never, lessons. Never thought of it that way. But that's just that's just the way I think of it. When anytime I see someone with dreadlocks, it's like, well, that takes fucking five years. So you must understand that good things come, good things happen to those who wait. Wow. Which is also the slogan for Guinness. I finally learned how to pour a real Guinness through a video. You did. Yes. I think every year a new video comes out. So this, is how you, this is how you're supposed to pour it. Yeah, I'm pretty good at pouring Guinness. Do you know how long it takes to pour a pint of Guinness? No. 10 seconds? 119.5 seconds. 119.5? Yeah. Just What's under two after? minutes. Oh, under two minutes. If, it's, if it takes two minutes, too long. Really? Yeah. If it takes under 119 to. 119.5 seconds. That's just it's it's gimmick, really. But that's what they um that's what they say. And the, but there is a better way to pour it, and worse ways to pour it. Like 45 degree angle, up to the bottom of the harp. Bottom of the harp. Then you leave it settle. Top of the and harp. And then to over over top over the top. No, well, you, it's two pours is the main thing. Some people, some places do three, but there's, that's unnecessary. But um. They say the next one, then it's above the top of the glass. Yeah. Like, so it comes out in a little bubble and it should be smooth, no bubbles. But, um, but then there's all different factors. Like, they, the temperature, with, with pouring, the temperature, the fucking, the guy who's pouring, there might be it. air in the line, just the, the distance between the guy who's pouring the line. has to have an absolute pipe on him. Yeah. If he doesn't have a big does dick. If he doesn't have a big yeah. dick, then obviously yeah, then you send fuck. it back. Yeah. Have the kitchen make it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, tell me about last night. So yeah, you last night. Your asshole with the wound. So I had another fucking. This this whole podcast is just me explaining. Yeah, my, I love my, my mushroom trips because I I'm gonna keep doing them. People, some people say to me like, you know, you need to be really careful. Yeah, you you know. need to be careful because you uh, it changes your brain chemistry. Like even this week, someone was telling me uh, from a good friend, like you know, people that love me try to look out for me. Right. You know. 
And they're like, you should be careful. But when I was drinking myself into absolute they oblivion, they, they, were, they like, were like, this is the man. Like, yeah. this is the man. Look at this. He's fucking, he, this man, he can drink 18 pints <laughs> and still stand it. Look at that. Go on, Darren. Go on. Home, like, and then it's yeah. like, look, he, look at him going fucking, he's going to ride that fat chick. He's yeah. going to ride that fat bird. And he's right. a, just such a legend. And then the next morning you wake up uh, and you're like, I'm a loser. And they're like, Legend, bro. Like, I yeah, love it's like what? Tonight. You, yes, it was yeah. unreal. What? It was great. It was such a good night. It's like that is fine. But then when you see me actually happy and doing <laughs> things with my life yeah. and traveling the world, it's like you want to be careful with down. those mushrooms. Mushrooms are your connection to the universe. They, they, they've been dropped by a higher power, and they, they, they allow you to connect to that higher power. Last night, I fucking met god basically like i i'm a believer what do you look like? I, it looked like me because it was me it what does the sun look like you <laughs> no there is no like that that's all just stories yeah, that's that's all stories to connect you yeah. um but last night so i was sitting in um well the god actually looked like the the girl I met in India. Oh, I was going to say the Tim Hortons cup on the ground. Yeah, no, that's fucking, that's for my cigarette butts. So I haven't, I, I was, I haven't really smoked today then either. I, or like I'm finished smoking, I think. I mean, I still get the cravings, but I know it's up to me right. not to do it. But I don't have to not do it either. Like I, right. ca I could just do it, but I feel better overall when I don't smoke. So it's just up to me. But so I was and doing yoga as well is like the the idea of yoga is so that you stretch your body out enough that your body is strong enough and flexible enough to be in to get into the lotus pose, which is the lotus pose is when you have, when you're like cross legged and you're straight back and your whole all the chakras are aligned. See, you lose people when you talk. No, like you don't. This. I but no, but no, but you. I, I lose other people. Oh, yeah, I, I I exactly. But I do. But I do lose people because people only listen until they don't understand right. anymore. And then and, go, what the and I've spent years getting here, so I understand when people are not with me well, anymore. Because you were that person from Chakra. Of course, I was. Sure, my, that was the same then with the secret. Up. Like yeah. anytime someone brings up chakras, heart chakra, I'm like, will you fuck off? But then you learn you about did, it yeah. and you learn about it and you see it happening. So, but when you can straighten them all up, when you can line them all up, they're all in your body and you can get, you can be comfortable lining up. Cause when I started yoga, I was in a cross-legged pose and she'd be saying like, breathe in, breathe out. But in my mind, I, I can't steady my mind because my, my legs are so sore. Like, right, right, they're right. fucking about to burst. It's like, how long left? How long more? How long more? And then, but last night I sat into it because I stretch every day. I've been right. doing yoga every day. So I got into the, the cross-legged pose. Can you kiss the tip of your penis yet? Uh, I can't do that. I'm not saying that. you tried, but like, you, I, know, you get to a point where you can stretch so much. You're like, oh, I could do uh, this. I, I've, never, <laughs> I've never tried to, but, no try right but it doesn't, um, I think I'm too tall. Like, <laughs> like. I guess if I was, see, anytime I'm doing yoga, I'm not erect. But maybe if, maybe if I tried to do it, like, I would have to get into a wild, <laughs> I would have to be in a wild headspace for, yeah. for me to try to do that. Yeah. Just give it a little But hey, now, now that you've put it in my head, yeah. no, I, 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 well, I, I, don't, I don't know. Who, who knows? Who knows? Oh, no. If I will do that or not. But... You would know if you go and touch your toes or, like, put your hands on the ground. And if you, like, put your head, if you can put your head through the freaking leg. No, but my, my head. Now <laughs> is at my knees, yeah, so my true. dick would have to come all the way out to my oh, knee. Hey, it does. It doesn't. Poor Guinness one thing. Yeah, I, yeah. My dick does not come out to my knee. That's like fucking. That's two foot, twenty four inches. That'd be too much. That would suck. Uh, hey, yeah. Sorry, but uh, no. But what? But I because so yesterday when I sat into the lotus pose, I got into it and I was felt perfectly comfortable. And I was in that alignment and uh, it felt it felt good. So I, I forgot about it. But it, when I came out of it, like two hours later, I had to like stretch out my legs. My legs were all numb, oh, where they were completely right. numb under no me. Blood. No, no, it was perfect. It was fine because your your body, you can do whatever you want with your body. You, we're, we're all contortionists if we stretch long enough. Yeah, that's true. But um, so then 
I was listening to the music. I have this playlist that's uh, unbelievable for being on mushrooms. It's like all about breathing and fucking just love. It's like we're we're all made of love. Like they, all the words, they kind of, all the lyrics kind of seem to flow with whatever state of um, your mushroom trip that you're in. It's weird. It seems magic. Like it seems supernatural because it is. Does uh, it? Sorry to interrupt you, but does it? Does it? still allow you to feel the waves of the mushrooms i don't know how you i don't know how you are now with, you feel so you feel but everything but it's um it guy it almost guides your trip so hmm. i heard everything i needed to hear like i went into an like my eyes were closed and then sometimes when i would be struggling with something then a voice in the music would be like go deeper go deeper oh, it's like holy intense. shit but it would come at exactly the time Tiny. that i needed it and then I would go deeper. And then I went in and I saw like heaven and hell. And I saw lots of people in hell. And I saw lots of people in heaven. And then I realized, and then people were going from hell into heaven. Whoa. Once they figured it out, why, why they were in hell. So I was, it was what I learned was, um, and it's just in me. It's like heaven is eternal. Heaven, you can be there forever. But if you're in hell, you're not there eternally. You're just there until you learn your lesson. Uh, and once you learn okay, your lesson, then you can go to heaven. Because if you if we let you into heaven before you learn your lesson, you're going to fuck up heaven for everybody else. Okay. So you go to hell and you are in a world of pain. That's what anxiety is. That's what depression is. It's you being in hell until you learn your lesson to get the fuck out of there. Mm. And some people kill themselves, but they just, they'll just get respawned and come back again. And you're going to have to learn your lesson again. And it keeps getting worse and worse and worse until yeah or like a fucking ant or whatever and then you get stepped on you're like shit now you come back as a beetle now you come back as something else or whatever i don't know how it works but like that's the concept of it is you Fire. keep going back until you learn your lesson but hell is here on earth and it just you're only in there until you learn your lesson then you you're welcomed into heaven so i'm in heaven when i'm doing shrooms i'm in heaven when i'm with good friends i'm in heaven when i'm with good people when i make money when i can do whatever i want when i'm making playing guitar and doing music when i'm on stage this is all heaven and hell is when i'm thinking i wish i was better i wish i was living down in austin i mm. wish i had a u.s visa I wish I had a million in the bank. If only I had a million in the bank, everything would be different. I wish I had better pop podcast equipment. I wish I had a fucking better whatever. I wish I had a better girlfriend. I wish that girl in India, I wish I lived in Tenerife so I could see her. That's hell. That's me allowing myself to be in hell. But if I appreciate what's here and now, um, then I'm in heaven. So it was that. that's what I was learning while I was on the shrooms because I was in that heart chakra. I basically, was, it was like a God feeling. And then... They, the more and more it went on, I was like, I accept everything. Just tell me what to do. I worship whatever it is that I'm looking at. I worship you. And then at one point, the music said, open your eyes, open your oh, eyes. My Lord. And I was like, fuck. So I was like, cause it, cause it felt so good closing them, but it was like, open your eyes. And then I opened my eyes and I looked up to the mantelpiece there. Yeah. And I don't know if I should. Nah, the room is fucked. No, nah, I, I won't move the camera because I'll fuck it up. But the bag of Agita, um, I can get that because it's just here. But it was like sitting up in the middle there. See, up, up in the middle. It wasn't levitating, oh. but it was. So this book, like, look, look at it, like gold and red. It's class. Like, it's it's an unbel it's unbelievable looking book. And that was sitting up in the middle of the mantelpiece piece where it looked like an altar basically above the fireplace and there's two little uh indian statues there they're right in front of it That's so this cool. all lit up so it was look look like Whoa. an altar and then it was like the music was like come come i like the the i don't am I, are you allowed to play music on we can do whatever we want yeah i guess uh so so this song came on um Calling the spirits, maybe. I'm gonna close my eyes for this. Is this it? No. Fuck, 
it was like Do you hear this? So it was saying, come. It was saying, come. So I was looking at the Bhagavad Gita. I was looking at this book up on the fucking altar. Mm-hmm. And this this song came on. And and I've been listening to this all week. Like this song. Oh, really? Like this is on my light Where songs. Where did you find this? I found it on this playlist. Mm-hmm. And then I just liked it. So I listened to this and it's like, come, come. So it was saying, come. So I was like, what do I need to do? Do I get up? So I stretched my legs because I couldn't, because they were under me the whole time. Right. And then I got them fixed and I rubbed them and I so I could stand up and then I just came to the bag of Gita. And um Did you read it? Or were you like Well so- then at first I just got to it and I thanked it. So you get the idea from this. But this is fucking this kind of music. This is the kind of music that's on the playlist. Like it's very slow melodic. It's it's in it's in a different frequency, basically, that you normally listen to. So it's almost uh, hip, hypnotic, like. Mm-hmm. And so then I went to the bag of Agita, and then the see as you see in the like the font, the font just kept changing. Oh, it just oh. kept changing to a new font, and it was just like, it was it was crazy. It was amazing. And then I went, you know, I was went into like a oh, prayer pose, and I said I was just saying thank you, thank you for everything. And then it was saying, come. And then basically what I got from the music was go deeper. And then I, I glanced out the side of my eyes was the bag of shrooms. So then I was like, am I supposed to take more? And I kind of looked around the room. It was like, you know, for guidance, it was like, and every day it felt like, yeah, it's ready. It's time to go deeper. So then I picked out a big fucking huge shroom. That Jesus. Size. And I was like, is this the one? And I asked that those two statues basically, and both of them nodded, like the statues came alive. So I was still fully with it, like I was yeah. fully there. Obviously, I was hallucinating, but I was like, I was in my own body. Aware, yeah. I had basically I meditated for on shrooms for about two and a half hours, seeing the universe inside my own mind, and um, then got called there. And then it was like, just follow whatever you're being called to at the time, and it will be fine. But you got to, you got to fucking distinguish between what you're being called to and yeah. what you want to do to avoid what you're being called to, like a cigarette, uh. like a drink, like a fucking just uh, like lying down and watching Netflix. Like you're not being called to watch mm-hmm. a movie, but sometimes you'll watch the movie and then you'll find you'll have another realization you're like oh shit okay this is this is what i should be doing right but you just need to be happy in whatever you're doing right now whatever you're doing right now be okay yeah. with it but did the, the statues did come alive and they were like nodding and i i was like thank you saying thank you to them one of them is like the goddess uh, it's called lakshmi she's the goddess of money and wealth in um in hinduism there's like there's millions of those gods but she's um these were just two that i picked up because I just felt like I liked the look of them. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is called Durga. She rides on the back of a lion or a tiger. And uh, she kills bad spirits. So she wards oh. off bad spirits and evil spirits. So they, they've been with me now since I came back from India. And everything has been going really good. And I mean, it doesn't necessarily connect. to do- It's just a piece of metal, you know, in reality. Yeah. But the fact that they're there and the fact that I do pray Simple. to them. And the fact that, I, yeah, the fact that they symbolize something for me and remind me of India and remind me of all the good times I've had there and the people I met and how they changed my life, that does change my life for the better. So when people say that, like, religion is not good, it's... can be. It, it can be. It can like, be. It can be. And um, so after that, I ate the extra shroom. Then the music was, like, getting better. And I was, like, starting... I was dancing with it and stuff. And... Uh, then it felt like I need to fucking go and tell Dave what's just after happening. Ah. So then I went out and I with I had the oh yeah I started reading first. Hmm. So I was like, where where am I going to read? And it's such a it's a beautiful book, like you know it's I mean it's probably the same, the Bibles are probably the same. I've never read the Bible, but um, 
I then I just started reading. And once I got a bit through, it was like, okay, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be reading. I've read it before, like, but then this time I've really got the right. wisdom out of it. And the third time I read it, I'll really get the yep. stuff then. It, it's just studying something rather than rather than just reading it. But I went to Dave then. It's something whatever I read in this, I knew wanted to show it to him. So I went out and then chatted to him then and explained the whole trip. But it just felt like I was just following what needed to be done at the time. But then I was explaining to him stuff out of this and he has been reading the Bible. And wow. And he what I read out of this, he was like, that's exactly this, that's the same as what I was reading in the Bible. So both of us are reading the Bibles of two separate religions. Right. And we're coming to the same conclusion Jesus. at the same time. So that's like, I don't agree with anything that the church, you know, going to a church and giving all your power to the church. That's, that's worshiping a false idol. That's worshiping. That's not God right. who you're worshiping. The priest isn't God. The priest isn't even your connection to god there is some great priests there's some legend priests and rabbis and uh but a lot of them get power and they right. abuse that power and that's all it is and that happens in fucking that happens everywhere that happens when you have in jobs in companies people might start off as good people then they get the power and then power corrupts because absolute power corrupts absolutely, absolutely. it oh. always does it always does so that can happen in religion as well. But that doesn't mean you have to fucking get rid of all the teachings. That doesn't no. mean you can you need to say I hate religion because no. just because the priests were banging little kids or the fucking, you know, uh Muslims crashed into the twin towers or whatever that anything negative that someone did in the name of religion but they didn't do it in the name of religion because in here in the bible it says thou shalt not kill oh, you really? should not of course it's one of the ten commandments Funny. i know so, nothing about the bible or... okay but they yeah thou shalt not kill and then people they read into it more and in the for in the the uh the New old testament the old testament well. is like is very it's very harsh it's like i am a I am a jealous God. I am put, put that was bad things happen when you do bad things. Like if I keep doing bad shit, if I keep causing crime and keep fucking people up, someone will kill me. And that person that kills me basically could be God working through someone else. So maybe he uses someone to kill someone. But if you're being good, if you're, if you're doing good, then um, you are protected you good things will keep happening to you that people call it karma or people call it whatever they want but when you live your life well then your life starts going well that just always happens I it agree. always happens when you eat the right foods you start looking better once you start looking better you start feeling better because other people are looking at you and they're complimenting you and it's like yeah because i'm putting in the work mm -hmm. but if you start doing the wrong shit then wrong shit happens but uh Basically, in, in this as well, it says don't, you know, you by killing people, you might get all the riches in the world, but you won't be able to enjoy them because they'll be tainted with the blood of the people that you killed to get them. And that's the way it happens. That's why you see like rich people. That's why you see Justin Trudeau. He leads a, he leads a country and um, and he's not fucking happy. Everyone's abusing him online. Everyone abuses him. He's he doesn't care. He just uh, he he can't be living in a like he's not living in the same reality that we're living in. Right. Well, um, causing havoc, raising taxes, making people lose their homes. There's thousands of people on the streets. Like uh, there's more and more people on the streets every day, and that's because of policies that they put through because they're not protecting the people. And they're adding a shitload of more people, even though there's too many people in the city already. Mm. And then they're adding as many immigrants from other countries as possible. And it just it fucks up the the dichotomy of the of the city. Not that we I'm an immigrant. Like we not that we shouldn't have immigrants, of course we should. Yeah, no, it's I, just I the timing of it and um doing it right and making sure we have facilities for all these people that are coming in here is is a big deal
but uh, they don't care about it because any new people that come in, they're going to vote liberal. They're going to vote for him. They're just like trying to buy votes. But it, but again, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter to me. It only matters to me if I allow it. Right. If I allow that into my life. So I can think about that or I can think about my individual path and just keep moving straight forward. No, I'm not, I'm not mocking. Yeah, no, I, no, I, no. I, 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 was, I think that's amazing. Yeah, I'm so good. Is the light is still on, oh, isn't it? Oh, fuck. I think mine probably... Caught it? That's fine. It, yeah, mine probably... I haven't really said up. that much. So yeah, we're that's good. True, that's true. So we're good. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, but so, you're right, though. So that was... Um, yeah, that was my, my trip last night. It was pretty... It was fucking powerful. And then I went out and talked to Dave for like three hours. So... And I got caught in a loop. My question to you is, I've got so many, but I want to make sure I don't ask for something that you already answered. So let me digest what you just said. Um, like, you've been doing this for how long? Not like open, not like which dosing yourself of mushrooms, but like you've been doing the micro dose kind of but mushroom management is what two I call years. it. Two years. Mushroom management for two years? What the Two and a bit. Like when I... Yeah, no, it wasn't until I moved into this house. I had probably done mushrooms maybe 10 times in my life before I moved into this house. Mm -hmm. And then I moved in here October 11th or something. Right. Two doing... years ago. Yeah. And then first day I moved in, Dave gave me uh, some shrooms. And he gave me a tiny little bit, but I got high. We had a great night together. And then after that, uh, I guess I found Blue Goba then after that. So that's when, um, I don't know how I came across Blue Goba. I think my cousin, I don't know, I can't remember. But then once I heard about Blue Goba, I ordered online, got the microdose pills, and uh, then started doing trips. Then I messaged Blue Goba, told them they were changing my life. Then I started doing the podcast, started doing the dungeon. Um, I just kept going further and further. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I went to Blue Gova sent me the DMT. So that sent me further again. That unlocked another part of my brain. And all this was like, could people lump these, lump these drugs in with the same as cocaine and MDMA and all that? It's mm -hmm. not, they're not the same at all. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not the same as opioids. This literally, it's very natural, grows in the ground. It's not poisonous because I do it often and I just keep getting better and better. This is the, it's the God molecule. Like it's what, it's what lets you know that we're part of something greater. We're all connected in, um, we're all connected via like wavelengths and by mycelium in the ground. And just, we, we all matter. We are, we're all parts of each other's lives and we can either make other people's lives harder or make it easier. And if we make it easier, then our lives become easier. But if we make it harder on them, if we make it uncomfortable for them, they'll make it uncomfortable for us. And that's it. We're here for a hundred years in this body, in this state. We might as well do as much good as we possibly can. And if you don't, then that's fine too. You'll just die earlier and then go into your new body. And then you'll probably fail next time as well and make it worse. And you're going to send on all your bad traits onto your kids and they're going to send it onto their kids and just, they're not going to get along until one of your kids actually rebels from what you did because they see, okay, my dad was a cunt. I better, um, I better try something different. And then they break free of the cycle. So then they create this new, this new path for their own kids. Mm -hmm. And then their kids maybe for a few generations might be happy until the black sheep in that family. <laughs> because like great people, sometimes they have like Muhammad Ali will say, or, Mike Tyson. I don't know how many kids they have, but like a lot of a lot of times, like celebrities like that, they have so many kids, and it's just like they have like eight kids, and they're like they can't have three of them are doctors, fucking three of them are writers or musicians, a couple of them are in jail. It's just like here's a big group of kids. Go on out <laughs> into the world and let's see what you do. Yeah. Fly, fly, and, just, and just, some see just see some fuck. of them fuck up. Some of them do really good things. Some of them do bad things. It's like you're not a good parent or a bad parent. It just depends on what you're doing right now. Like you're, right. you're just you're just dealing with the situation you're in right now. 
if you if you're getting if you get fired from your job you're probably going to be a bad parent for a couple of years while you're trying to get a new job because you feel like i need to work on the job right. i need to get this job so i can feed you because feeding you is better than teaching you right from wrong right now just fucking leave me alone you know so then but then they got to yeah. learn on their own so it 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 really doesn't matter what we do because it's it's basically a long cycle that we're never getting out of anyway yeah okay so here's a question what is your cycle like when it comes to mushroom management do you do it monday wednesday friday do you do it uh, no monday, I, Tuesday, wednesday, friday? I don't have uh, tuesday, i don't have a schedule you don't. i don't even know what day of the week it is usually i, I get up someone texts me and then it's like be are we still on for tonight and then i'm like okay it must be wednesday and I just, you know, I set like alarms and shit. Yeah, like I don't, we, we didn't, in caveman days, they didn't know, oh, it's Monday. Yeah, I guess we better yeah. do this. It's like, no, that's just, that's keeping us under control. Yeah. It's a control tactic. Yeah. Uh, days of the week and months of the year. It's like, yeah, it gets colder the end of the month. It gets colder at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Then it gets fucking warmer again. But that depends on where you live. In True. Australia, they have the opposite yep. schedule. In California, it doesn't really get cold at all, depending right. on where you are. It's like everywhere has different seasons. I grew up in Ireland. You grew up here. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get as cold as it does here in Ireland. And then we're like, but this is the way it is. No, it's not the way it is. It depends on where you are. It depends yep. on who you are. It depends on what part of your life you're in. It depends on who the people you have around you, how much money you have, what you, what you, where you grew sure. up. So none of it matters, basically. Exit the fucking matrix, basically. That's what I... I've done. So I don't I don't care what day of the week it is. And sometimes I get way too cocky in this way of living and then I I end up fucking up. Mm. I end up doing the wrong things and then I get brought back and I learn a new lesson right. to try to get me right out there again. Mm. If I if I get too cocky, if I get too confident then it's like no, you're putting the cart before the horse. You uh, you need to slow down. You need to walk before you can run. But I'm getting better and better every day. Yeah. Uh, I'm, like um, Muay Thai helps me. Um, yoga helps me. Eating the right things help me. When yeah. I'm not eating fucking Uber Eats at three o'clock in the morning. Which is how often? That helps. Well, less and less now, but sometimes it could be every day of the week. <laughs> like, and then... Uh, I'm kind of the same. And then I just, I, I just don't feel good. I know. Um, and, t- and then I don't stop until I'm like, okay, I need to make a change. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, I mean. Any other questions? Uh, so what many. Are we gonna talk There's about? so many that just buzzing through my head. Okay, so I asked that. Like, do you ever. I don't know, want to make it sound negative, but do you, when, you, when you're doing your, your micro dosing or macro dosing, do you, are your bad moments just as vivid as your good moments during that cycle? Whatever it is, right? You're thinking about fucking, I don't know, rent is due tomorrow. Oh, fuck. Or you're thinking, no, do I have an STD from that hooker I hooked up with? Well, see, night? none of that stuff matters. None of it matters. None of it matters. Like, all that matters is what actually matters. So sometimes, it, like, I could go, I didn't cry or anything last night, but you sometimes when I'm on shrooms, I might spend 20 minutes thinking about something very sad. Mm-hmm. Like when one of the first mushroom ceremonies I did, it was just after my grandmother died. Oh, yeah. So I was basically speaking to her and talking to her and asking her the questions that I wanted to ask her before she died. And I felt that she was with me. And just all the different lessons that she taught me and I was thanking her for it. And then I was, so I was crying during that, Yeah. but it was like a nice, it was like a nice, it's a happy cry. Yeah. Kind of. But some other people that were around me were like bawling, crying and wailing and crying out and be like, mommy, or I miss you or whatever. Because, but I had, I, I just felt like I was in a different part. I'm in a different part of my life. Mm. than they are with their trauma like i've i dealt with the trauma a couple of years ago i had that really bad wild trip and um and i suppose i do more mushrooms than than people normally do because people usually 
listen you know they listen to the outside influences in their life that are telling them don't don't do this anymore you're you're hurting yourself or whatever but i i'm surrounded by people that also like to do this that, right. and they're like the most zen people that i know but also you don't need the mushrooms that's the one that's almost the, the learning at the end of it is that you can control all this stuff by just breathing right just breathe just breathe remember to breathe that's basically the whole lesson out of the whole thing because sometimes it still can get intense and then i end up trying to i end up trying to explain my my myself to everybody that i'm talking to mm-hmm. like i was talking to gibbo and i was trying to explain my case to him and until he got it you I weren't gonna stop happy. Yeah, yeah and then until I start breathing then and then every everything starts going quickly and quickly and quickly the like the whole world speeds up and then it gets more I get more anxiety and, mm-hmm. and now I find it harder to speak and now I can't find the words and then it's like remember just breathe mm-hmm. and uh they just breathe and then when, when I would breathe I can think about exactly what I want to say and then I can put it in a right way that he will understand right and then uh and then i could make him laugh like i could make anyone laugh at any time <laughs> when i'm at that point in my trip mm. i can be the funniest person in the world like i can uh, i can just i know what will make somebody laugh like right. i know how to tap into the same wavelength that they're on so that they i can release them from whatever they're in now and just make them laugh but um but yeah but it's it's not at the same time, you know, it's not, it's obviously not to try to hear, to try to, to try to see it from someone else's perspective while I'm telling a story like that. But if you've done mushrooms, you kind of understand because everybody, you know, everybody goes through a different thing while they're on it. Mm-hmm. But then uh, today I was just listening to music coming back from the grocery store. It was like scar tissue was on and uh, that, just that lyric is like, with the birds, I'll share this lonely view. Mm-hmm. It's a lonely view. Like when you when you figure something out before everyone else has, or before everyone else did, around you has. When you not 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 even that. It's like everyone needs to figure out a different thing. Like you, what whatever you need to figure out is different to what I needed to figure out. Mm. But what I needed to figure out, I figured it out for now until there's something else I need to figure out. Right. But me trying to tell, like we get an urge to tell everybody else about how good we have it, mm-hmm. how good our life is going, how good it feels to be free. Yep. But then you, other people never get you uh, the way you want them to get you. <laughs> and, uh, but some people get you more than others. And then you kind of keep those people around, but it's like, it's still, once you figure, once you do something big, once you do something you think is going to help a lot of people, it, it gets lonely then. Cause, um, but I saw that I saw in, um, in a video before it was like, he's the guy said, I can't remember who said it, but he said like loneliness is attack is a kind of a tax that brilliant people have to pay for thinking outside the box. Ah, uh, yeah. Because there's so little people that think like that, that it's it's tough to find somebody else to talk to about mm. your findings. But mm. the more you keep telling the truth, the more you keep being yourself, the more of those people come out of the woodwork that you've never met before. Right. And you've never met them before is because you weren't on their wavelength yet. Right. So now that you're on a different wavelength, you are going to attract other people on that wavelength. And that's why, that's why now that I say when I went down to, to New York and to Texas, just famous people were coming out of the woodwork, mm-hmm. going to Costa Rica, Alistair Overeem just walked over to the table. Yeah. And then I learned that's from so him wild. because I was on a different wavelength. I'm right. in a different sphere of people now. Mm-hmm. And anyone can move wave. Like it's not, it doesn't mean I'm better or anything because I can, I can wake up tomorrow and choose evil and go right back down to the to the other yep. if something else that i saw before was um someone said if you are one of god's favorites 
then you're also one of the devil's favorites. So mm. you can choose. You can choose. Do you want to choose God or do you want to choose the devil? Because the devil will bring you the riches as well. Right. The devil will make me a famous comedian too. The devil will make me rich beyond my fucking desires. It'll give me everything I want. It'll give me that penthouse apartment. It'll make me CEO of a multinational company. It'll give me it all. But um, but you pay for it. You pay right. for it with the devil. God just give God gives it to you because he wants you to have it. And he knows that you are worthy. The devil knows you're not worthy. So the devil's like, I'll take your soul. You fucking go in there. You take the money. But you're going to pay for it. You're going to be up there. You're going to be getting your dick sucked by fucking prostitutes in your penthouse apartment. But your wife's going to walk in. And now she's going to take your kids. And now you're in hell. Now you're in hell until you figure this shit out. Until you get the fuck away from the devil and choose God or choose good or, you know, just get away from evil. But, yeah. um, yeah. We should, what time is that? We should, because we got a 6.45. 6.45. Yeah, yeah. could do... Is there any other question? <laughs> this is good. This seems like it, I, I don't know if this is even if people would even want to watch. Why? Why? Well, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? I, I'm enjoying this, even though it probably looks like uh, yeah. I am blank. It's because um, I was up at fucking the crack of fuck this morning, yeah. so I'm like my my brain is scrambled. But I'm enjoying listening to no. The, I think it. I think it's stories because like when I when I watch people talking about this, the things that I'm relaying, I I enjoy it. So I don't yeah. know why. I would even get into my head about it. It doesn't matter anyway. But um, yeah, this is it. So yeah, we we'll go one more and then. Or do you? Ha- is there? Yeah, I got. I got an improv. Improv. Oh, improv. Yeah. Okay. You want to do it or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's very simple. Um, I am the delivery man. Okay. Uh, and I'm delivering your whatever food. It doesn't matter. But I am delivering it, and I, I've arrived at the door twenty minutes late. I'll just hold like the, the, this, whatever. I'm twenty minutes late. Delivery. Delivery. Ching. Hello, sir. Here's your food. That was supposed to be here twenty minutes ago. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I took a wrong turn. You took a wrong turn. Yeah. Have you been to my house before? Were you taking? Why were you using your own directions? You just read off the phone which way you turn. Actually, we're not allowed to use our phones, sir. We have to use the the, uh, the map book. You were using a map, like an actual paper map. Yeah. To try to get to my house. Yeah, it's it's Uber policy. That's that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but I can show you the map book if you like. Yeah, show me. Show me the map book. See? Map book. Where is your house on this? Oh, sorry. I can't tell you where my house is. I'm going to fucking find your house, and I'm going to burn it down. And I'll be there 20 minutes early with a fucking pitchfork to shove it in between your fucking eyes. If you ever bring me my food and eat late again, you fucking bitch. Have a good day, sir. Thanks. You too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Oh right. fuck! We'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there, there with the improv. Well, okay. um, that was that was me just thinking. Oh, this could be funny, and it wasn't. No, no, but it's okay. But it's up to me to make it funny. No, it's up to both of us. Mm. That's the point. But point see, I, we were saying no. I think I was saying no. Like, why did you do this instead of bringing it up by saying mm. yes? It's okay. That's like. The whole like yeah, you have to say yes and, and is like the beginner level shit. You just it just has to be natural. And like, how would you feel if a guy fucking showed up twenty minutes late? Well, I wouldn't care. Like, well, then that's how you should have played it. I'm like, oh, okay. And then in that, we would just continue to do this, and it would be, who knows? Maybe even someone watching this would be like, that was funny. I don't fucking know. We have no yeah. audience. We're literally doing it through a screen. Or you'd be surprised, like doing. Okay, it. do it again. Do it again. Same <laughs> thing. We'll okay. just do it again. Okay. Ah! Delivery. Delivery. 
Delivery. Oh, fuck. Delivery. Bling. Hello, sir. Uh, oh, sorry. Here's your food. Sorry, man. I, I, was, uh, I was asleep. I was just after smoking a shitload of weed. Oh, that's uh, okay. I smoke weed, too. What time is it, even? Uh, it's like 8 p.m. Yeah. 8 p.m.? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was a little late. I took a took the wrong turn. You were late. If you came or if you came anywhere earlier than this, you wouldn't have been able to wake me up because I was fucking zonked. You came just on time, lad. And uh, I don't care time. if this is cold or not. Great. Well, yeah, no, enjoy. It's uh, you know, great straight from the grill of sushi me. Made it myself. You made it, and then you brought it to me. Do you work for Uber or sushi me? I work for sushi me, but it's a one it's a one pop shop. I make it and then I deliver. I don't think that's how Uber works. Are you a spy? Uh, yeah. Okay, you can take this back. Okay. Um, I'm going to order McDonald's. <laughs> okay, be sure to tip. I'm telling you, someone would laugh. I know you're like, that was fucking weird. Some creep in the crowd would have been like, confused laughing or mm. laughing. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. But you get better and better the whole time. Every yeah, time you try, and you also fail miserably. That's the best part about improv. Yeah, you come up with absolute blanks, and then someone will laugh because they see you struggling. You're like, "Fuck, okay, well." But I think Oops. you shouldn't struggle, though. I, th I think you shouldn't want to struggle. You don't you want to struggle. Yeah, but you should. But I have no idea what you're going to say. Yeah, but I have no idea what you're going to say. Yeah. Exactly. So the whole the whole idea is like. Like, I mean, I didn't have anything in my head to be like, oh, this is where this is going to go. Mm. I was just listening. I was trying to listen to what you were saying and go off that. But sometimes people go in with, with like, they want to go this way. Because you'll get a fucking scenario that it's delivering and some guy will be like, all right, sick. I'm going to fucking deliver this food and I'm going to throw it out of the stage. And it's like, well, what if I just open the fucking people? Hmm. That now what? How are you gonna throw it in my face? You know, no, you it's, have to fucking yeah, it's bizarre. And then people are like, "Oh man, I want to throw it in his face." Well, fuck, just uh, cause, dude, every delivery I've had from Uber, or DoorDash, River, they just drop on the fucking ground. There's no mm. contact. Yeah, no, mine always gets left at the door the, at the door because yeah. I don't want to see their face. Because <laughs> if I if I'm ordering Uber Eats, I'm at my worst. I'm at place. I, I, yeah. yeah, like I I I'm, agree. I have. I have smoked weed. I, I wouldn't. I won't order a breach unless I'm unless I'm stoned. Mm. So if I do that, then I have smoked weed. I have neglected to write this evening. I'm probably watching some stupid fucking Disney movie, and, and you're not going to cook I've, food. I've, I've wasted. Yeah, I'm not going to cook food because I don't have food. My room is probably a state because I'm in that yeah. zone. Oh, I'm yeah. in that artistic degenerate zone that I'm just like. I'm thinking, but no art to get. But it I don't want. Well, it it, it is getting done because I write about it later. Oh, okay, that's good. But uh, and that's a funny thing. To, it's a funny thing to to go back to when I was living like that, yeah. like a fucking animal. And um, but I don't want to see anybody when I'm like that. No. So I'm like, leave it at the fucking door because fucking I out. don't want anyone to see me like this in yeah. my fucking degenerate state. But everyone goes into those things. You know, everyone has this I had a recent version of themselves. I, was, I, yeah. have it, like, I always have it and then get out of it. Yeah, but now, it, right now it just happens less and less now that, I, that I'm going back to Muay Thai and I'm actually reading books and fucking doing right. all this shit. All right, let's fucking finish this. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, guys. Um, if you don't do mushrooms, you should probably try. If, you do, if you're curious about it and you want to learn more about it, then send me a message because I think like they're go it's going to be legal soon. Um, there it's the same now as weed was in Canada. They, there's weeds, there's sh shroom stores. It's not shroom. technically legal, but it kind of is legal. They're very good for you. They're they're good for your brain. Um, and you might look at me telling these mental stories, but it is very cool. If you're on, if you're happy with your life, then stay doing. Yeah, if what you're, you're happy doing. and you know what God brand, stay doing what you're doing. If you're happy, like that, if you're genuinely happy and you're not just pretending to be happy, stay doing what you're doing. But if you're, depressed. you're on it and if you're happy, let me know how you're happy because I would, I like to hear success stories. But if you're depressed and if you're fucked up, 
and you're trying to put on a brave face for everyone else, even though you're actually not very happy, send me a fucking message and let's talk about it. Because I've been there too. I've been to therapy. I've done, um, I've been depressed. <laughs> Sorry, it's like to... a PSA. Keep going. Yeah, it is I a mean, PSA. Making faces. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, whatever. I'll do sign language. Depressed. Go. You've been depressed. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, I, my, I'm, I will, um, I will always message you back if you need help. So just let me know if you do, because I like making people laugh, but I also want to be there for people. Yeah, me it. too. Fuck you. No, we should have. A, that's what we should get. We should get a hotline. People would call us. Yeah, how do we do that? Uh, well, I guess we'll, we can. We'll, we'll we could just. I, we, I think we'd. We need to get more subscribers on YouTube. So if you're watching this, subscribe on YouTube and tell other people to subscribe. Because once we get a thousand subscribers, then you can go live, and then people could join in. I didn't know that. Okay, sick. Yo, subscribe, man. I don't know even if you need the, all those subscribers. I don't know. I, I think we might even be able to do it right now, but we'd have to go live on we'll, YouTube. Maybe, we'll, and so we'll do you next time. people in. We'll do it next week. We'll see. We'll see. Yo, just subscribe. Make fun of me, please. Yeah? All right. All right. That's it. Bye. Uh, what look out for upcoming shows. I'm doing shows in the dungeon every Wednesday night. Message me for tickets. All, everything's on Instagram. Darren Burke Comedy. Goodbye.